At this potato farm in the New South Wales Riverina, it takes 120 days from planting to harvesting to create a product that can be consumed within minutes. But the journey of these spuds stretches back even further. Jason Menegazzo's family has been growing potatoes for over half a century. Eight or ten tubers. For the last two decades, they've concentrated on one major client. Oh, yeah, look at that. In the last 20 years, we've been solely supplying to Smiths in the crisping industry. And before that, my family, we started basically as migrant Europeans coming to Australia to the small blocks in Werribee South, and that was 80 years ago now. So, yeah, it's a long history. It didn't just happen overnight. Look at that. Perfect. Yeah, Agronomist good. JP Smith is inspecting the quality yeah, of the potatoes that will soon be turned yep. into snack chips. Yeah, this looks really good. It can take 20 years to fully develop the potato variety, and he says consistency is everything. So we're looking at uh, size, colour, uh, texture, um, dry matter, so solid content of the potato. And we look at all these things because when we produce them, our consumers want to have that beautiful potato in their packet when they're eating it. So it gives them the experience of that excellent quality in every bite in every bag. PepsiCo, which owns Smith Snack Foods, has developed its seven potato varieties to ensure year-round supply. We have a variety now that we grow in Australia that we grow it in the spring and summer, and when the crop dies, we can leave it in the ground for up to four months using Mother Nature as, a, as the refrigerator, allowing us to have the same great quality in the middle of the winter as we have during the summer and spring. The company contracts a staggering 120 million kilograms of potatoes annually. They're grown by farmers across 47 sites around Australia, ranging from northern Queensland to southern Victoria. At the processing shed, the potatoes are unloaded, washed and then grated. Green ones don't make the cut. Today, Jason's wife Claudine and their daughter Matisse are helping out on the production line. And his father, Gerald, who has retired from the farm, occasionally drops by to check on operations and offer advice. These potatoes are heading on a 1300 kilometre trip where they'll be turned into crinkle cut chips within 48 hours. Introduced from England in 1931, this year Smith's Chips celebrates 90 years of manufacturing in Australia. In Sydney, Surrey Hills, Frank Smith and George Ensor established the first of several factories around the country. Over the decades, the manufacturing methods and technology have evolved dramatically. I've travelled up to the Smith's Chips factory here in Brisbane, where millions of potatoes are turned into packets of chips each year. I'm heading in to see the process and how it's all done. This is one of two factories where the chips are still made. The other is in Adelaide. In one day, 320 tonnes of potatoes roll through this site, around 65,000 tonnes annually. A water flume shoots the potatoes across to the factory, where they are peeled, sized and then sliced. The slices are then fried for three minutes at 180 degrees. To cook these chips, 14 tonnes of Australian sourced canola oil is used every day. Infrared cameras monitor the moisture and oil content as they move along the process line. An optical sorting machine discards any irregular chips. 
While the process is largely automated, around 570 employees work here. Long gone are the days when consumers seasoned their chips using a satchel of salt included in each packet. Chicken was the first flavor variety released in 1961. From there, the classic staples including original, salt and vinegar, and barbecue continue to this day. And the company is constantly searching for the next big flavor. So we've got a research and development department um, that work really closely with our consumers. Um, they look at what's happening on social media, what restaurants are doing, what different food trends are out there in the market. Um, and they also will uh, look to, you know, overseas, so look at Europe, the US, Japan, because they're quite innovative in terms of their, you know, their food flavors. The chips go through a quality control process, which includes taste testers. We have people here who will taste a chip and they will say, oh, I think it's from this area or another area or a certain grower. Some of our team are, are, are super well trained and so familiar with the products that they actually can detect a, a minute difference in the, in the product texture or, or flavor. Manufacturing manager Jason Webster says 95% of production waste is recycled, much of it going to compost and animal feed and it's in the company's interest to minimise waste where possible. We're really passionate about you know, ensuring we maximise you know, what we recycle, but more importantly, we don't want to create the waste in the first place. So when you look at things like peel, we have stringent measures in terms of what our peel levels should be. For overpeeling, we're creating more waste, and also we're then having to use more potatoes to make, to make our finished products. So it's not just the emphasis on where that waste goes, it's the emphasis is on let's not have that waste in the first place and minimise it as much as, as much as we can. In addition to potato snacks, the factory produces corn chips and other grain-based products. Uh, I'm learning about... CEO Danny Saloni yeah. says the company is continually addressing sustainability in its manufacturing. He says this facility has reduced its use of water by 40% and electricity by 16% over the past five years. We need to continue to improve, sharpen our tools, understand the latest technology to uh, ensure that we leave a better footprint in the community and the environment we operate in. So that's an integral part of the way we work. Right as we speak now, um, our snacks packaging, 100% of it is recyclable. We're also working on biodegradable or compostable. We want to get there by 2025. By the end of this year, we'll have 100% renewable electricity from our manufacturing plants. That's a long way from potatoes in the paddock, but this is where it all begins. Farmer Jason Menegazzo says he is honoured to follow in his father's footsteps. I'm proud and I'm lucky too, because I've been given the opportunity to farm and it's something that I've learned from my father and then obviously evolved on with new skills and new practices that we, we are doing on the farm. You always keep learning from your elders. Even though technology changes, it's just the culture and principles remain the same.